Okay. I'll call this meeting to order at 7.32. Um, Tiffany, would you like to take roll call of the directors, please? Yes. Uh, Board President Naylor? Here. Director Green? Here. Director Oyserman? Here. Director Shea? Here. Director Perry is not here. Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome everybody to the August 11th uh, M MCSD board meeting. Um, I'm going to make a short announcement about the rules of this uh, remote meeting. This will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood CSD Board of Directors pursuant to Executive Order N2920 issued by the Governor of the State of California. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member <coughs> public can participate telephonically or via internet by utilizing the web link or dial-in information printed on this agenda. At points in the meeting when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either by internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click on the raise hand feature within the Zoom application. If connected by, by telephone, please dial star nine. Okay, um, the board came out of closed session at 7.10 with no action items to report. Okay, we'll move on to agenda, uh, the agenda item C. Does anyone on the board have any changes or deletions from tonight's agenda? No. Hearing none, we will adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you, and we will move on to item D, the consent calendar. Does any member of the board have any questions about either the July 14th meeting minutes or the bills paid? Nothing. No, I asked Eric my questions earlier. Okay, I've had all my questions answered prior to the meeting as well. Okay, does any member of the public have any comment or questions on the uh, meeting minutes or the bills paid? Yeah, one second, Jay. Uh, go ahead, Stephen. Yes, hi. Um, just uh, one point of business. I, I do like these virtual meetings. It would be helpful uh, at the beginning of the meeting to recognize uh, the participants in the meeting as they come in so we know that we actually have a connection. Um, it doesn't take any time, and I don't, I'm not using it to you know, say anything. So it just, it, it'll just help because as you know, sometimes connections can be tricky. Um, with regard to uh, item D, the consent calendar, um, the draft minutes, uh, I, I, we used to not only um, recognize the members of the public who attended, but also characterize what they had to say and uh, less and less information is going out to the public. Um, I assume that's because you don't want the public voice to be heard. I, I think that's not so good, um, especially during this election season. Um, and that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, I, I know Tiffany uh, works under your instruction, so uh, I, I'm directing this to the board. Um, as far as bills paid, we still I, I have questions regarding the bills paid. We have a lot of money going out to refunds, and I thought they would be over by now. But um, how long are we going to be paying refunds? Is is question number two? Question number one. There's also a, a, an claim, and I'm not quite sure. Maybe you can help. Uh, it says uh, 407,770 FY FERS UAL. Um, maybe you can, um, you know, clarify what that means. Um, and, you know, I asked for this last month. I think it would be really helpful during this year to understand the amount of refunds that we are issuing just so we can kind of. Uh, really understand where our cash flow is is going and uh, not have it all mixed up uh, in, into everything. I mean, it's really hard as as 
someone who doesn't read budgets all day to follow what's going on. Um, there, you know, I know you're, you're spending lots of money right now um, trying to get uh, the, uh, uh, the building um, uh, built, and you've got uh, geotech, you've got all kinds of expenses there. That also, too, would be helpful to understand in a separate category, a summary category, so we can understand where that's going. Um, you know, I, I hope you will reevaluate um, the way that you report the, the business uh, of the district because, um, you know, you're spending lots of money. We've lost lots of money. This is, this is a historic year. All of you are responsible for uh, good decision making during this crisis. And, uh, you know, if you do a good job, you, you, you should let people know what you're doing. Um, so, uh, so, once again, to summarize, can you tell me what some of the, I, I had a question regarding uh, the 407,000, I think it was, um, and then the other question was regarding the the refund when they will stop. Eric, do you want me to handle the uh, $407,000 question or would you like to do it? Um, actually, I meant that there's a few things on here, Jeff. So if you're comfortable with it um, really quickly, um, in addition to that, and I can go over some of these, um, July is typically a month where we pay several annual uh, payments and bills that are fairly significant. Things like our uh, workers' comp um, is paid annually and then reconciled at the close of the year. Our property liability insurance is paid annually in July, um, and reconciled at the close of the year. The 407,000 specifically relates to our required unfunded accrued liability payment uh, made to uh, CalPERS for pension. That does not include the normal payments that come along with each payroll based off of a percentage of payroll uh, in accordance to what classification their, uh, their PERS is. Um, and then you can see, you know, there's a few other large payments that are in here um, that again, you know, all of these are annual payments. They're made one time, they're paid in full. I can say, you know, by paying the PERS amount in full at 407,000, we save just under $15,000 in interest if we were to pay that monthly. Um, so if we, we do have an option to pay it monthly, but it tax interest on, and at the end of the year, it would have cost us about $15,000 more. Um, so paying it up front is, is a tax saving maneuver, and it's required, and there's no getting around paying that. Um, in terms of the refunds, and I could let Luke chime in, but these are, uh, these are not refunds from cancellations. These are refunds from people who have chosen to uh, withdraw from a program. So they have signed up and for whatever reason, they uh, canceled. Um, there is a fee that's associated with that. It's, uh, I believe, $50 for each session. Um, so uh, at this point, these are not because we've canceled classes. These are because people have taken on their own accord not to attend a program or a class or a camp session that they originally signed up for. And uh, if I can add to that, um, thanks, Eric. Uh, those um, refunds that you see in July, um, we pretty much filled all of those spaces in um, in our camp program. And so we not only um, charged the cancellation people, we also were able to fill the majority of those spots as well. I'd like to add one more thing. Um, in addition to what Eric just said, just to, ha just to recognize that uh, six years ago, we were not in a position with cash flow in order to make annual payments up front and save the $15,000 that we did this year when we made that upfront payment. Um, through better financial management, we have the cash to do that and it saves the district money. Thank you. Any other comments from the public on the consent calendar? Not at this time. Okay, we'll move on. We need to approve. Oh, right. We will approve. <coughs> Do I have a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. Bill, Second. thank you. <laughs> Leah seconded. 
and I'm muted. Was, it, was there a tie? Okay. We'll give it to me. Okay. Bill moved and we seconded to um, approve the consent calendar. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Do uh, you want me to call Tiffany? names? Tiffany? Yeah. Board President Naylor? Aye. Director Green? Aye. Director Oysterman? Aye. And Director Shea? Aye. Thank you. Thanks. Getting back on track. Um, <clears throat> okay. We have item E, public comment, open time for items not on the agenda. Do we have anybody that would like to mention anything? Yeah, you do. One second. You know, I have to mention. Yes, Stephen, go ahead. You know, I have to mention something. Um, first of all, uh, congratulations on getting through this summer. Um, I know it's been a very difficult time for all of us. Um, I, I'm still a bit frustrated that. Uh, that the services have been cut back so much, and uh, I, I'll speak to the uh, to this later on. But um, I guess at this point, I just want to say, you know, out of boy, you know, you you've done well with the, uh, the summer camps. It, it looks like I think it's a very positive thing for the community, and you know, the light hopefully is at the end of the tunnel here with this. This COVID crisis. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll be back onto normal footing next year. But um, we still need to deal responsibly during this difficult time that we don't overextend ourselves. Um, I'm very concerned about that um, because you put all your eggs uh, in, you know, getting this uh, Bill Hansel project built and without a price tag during a time when when our finances are hit so hard. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Are there any other comments from the public? Uh, yeah, one second. Um, there you go. Lisa, uh, go ahead. Hi, everyone. This is Lisa Ruggieri. This is my first time attending one of these meetings. Um, so good to be here, and uh, I just wanted to to, to share my um, my daughter and son's experience with the camp this summer. Um, both have been enrolled for all three sessions, and it has been just uh, just an amazing difference um, from being in social isolation for the last part of the school year to actually being around peers and friends and um, it's just been it's just been incredible so thank you for um, <laughs> for, for, for being able to, to make this work and um, the cohort groups that you're able to put together and doing this safely um, in, a, in a way that's been so positive for my kids uh, that's all I wanted to say thank you Lisa I appreciate the comments and uh, once again Luke congratulations to you and your staff for uh, what appears to be an incredibly successful summer camp season under the circumstances. Thank you so much. Any other comments from the public? No. Okay, we'll move on then. Item F, district management matters, um, and F1, proposed amendments to the Marinwood CSD mission statement. Um, this is a this is something um, that was an outcome of discussing support for the Black Lives Matter um, meeting or at the last meeting, and the suggestion was made to perhaps look at our um, mission statement and see if we could, you know, dovetail that in a bit. Um, so we provided a uh, both a current and a proposed mission statement for the board to review and to discuss, and if it seems reasonable to adopt. So I will stop there. Does anyone on the board have any comment on what was presented with regard to the mission statement? It seems to me, just reading 
the differences is just language moving words around. It really didn't change anything from the current mission statement except the last question. We're open to everybody. I thought that's what we were already. Do we really need to add this? For crying out loud, this is carrying things a bit beyond our scope here. Okay. Thank you. Other comments? I think I understand what you're saying, though. And yes, in general, we believe that our parks and our programs and our facilities are open to all, but I do think that we do need to make a statement and make it very clear to others and a reminder to ourselves that we are inclusive of everybody and need to pause sometimes when we may be saying something or doing something to make sure that we are being inclusive and not possibly offending somebody. I totally, totally disagree with this. This is carrying PC movement way too far. I, I, I'm i going to talk about this on our next agenda item in the same way. Okay. I believe in the golden rule. We are by law open to everybody. We can't discriminate about against anybody for any reason. Why it needs to be in a mission statement is beyond me. Thank you, Bill. Leah, do you have anything to say? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I see. I mean, I see both sides of this. I see this kind of boilerplate, and then I also I can echo Bill's sentiment. So I, um, I don't have a problem approving it or making a motion to approve. Um, seems a little bit in the weeds, but no comment further than that. Okay, um, Bill, to your comment, some of the. Uh, First of all, the mission statement itself is bullet points and moving words around, not precisely. Um, actually, we do, um, we do provide services to more than just district residents. Um, I hope that was clear. It wasn't necessarily um, meant to, as a wordsmithing exercise, but rather than just saying that what well, services we do provide were strictly for the Marinwood district residents um, is a little confining and isn't exactly the truth. So um, with regard to the mission statement, um, I think probably your biggest issue is the last additional statement. But You're I right. Know. You're hmm? right. Okay, that's fair. No problem. Um, that's why we discussed this at the board level. Okay. Um, I can also say that, um, you know, as Director Perry, who has been, you know, pretty much um, our most tireless board member in either maintaining or introducing policies since she sat on the board, was not going to be at this meeting. I took a one-off phone conversation with her two weeks ago to get her input as well. And um, not surprisingly, some of it mirrors a little bit of what you're saying, Bill, although in a much nicer tone. Anyway. I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, um, her concerns were more in line with, um, you know, some other feedback, which I certainly anticipated about the, um, the next issue, and that is um, we have always restricted ourselves to our subject matter jurisdiction and matters pertaining therein. And this one goes a little bit beyond that. My feeling in introducing this was this movement was somehow um, somehow justified a little bit of us stepping outside of our comfort zone and our jurisdiction in order to um, make a statement based on some of the um, notoriety that our community got um, recently and also over the last year with regard to the school um, renaming. Um, however, I'm not necessarily trying to be 
politically correct or over overdo it, but I do think also that I agree with several people who say that silence is consent. And wanted as a uh, as a board, I was hoping that we would um, at least acknowledge this, um, irrespective of the fact that it doesn't fit as nicely and neatly into our um, into our role on behalf of our community. Um, and that's my take on it. Um, anybody else on the board have anything to say? Okay. Um, do everything from the public. Yes, before you go there, um, yeah. it, it, you know, I'm trying to compartmentalize these two items and looking strictly at the mission statement. Um, personally, I agree with a majority of the changes that were made um, based on what the reality is of what we do right now. If you look at the current mission statement where it says to develop and promote recreation programs and activities which satisfy the majority demands of the residents of the district, or it's uh, the second or the last bullet point to develop and maintain park areas and recreational facilities and preserve open spaces for the enjoyment of the residents of the district. Um, this was written in, when the district was first put together. Um, I think the reality is we, you know, at most have a 60-40 district resident, non-resident split. Luke might be able to chime in on that better when it comes to our recreation programs and it's probably closer to 50-50. And then also, you know, in terms of our parks and our open spaces, I, I certainly think that those are, you know, open available for the enjoyment of, of all public. Um, so it just, to me, I don't necessarily disagree with those minor modifications, and I think they make sense based on the reality of who it is we serve and who is enjoying our properties. But those two items specifically are, are intended for, you know, public, not just district residents. Um, obviously, within our rec programs, uh, our district residents have opportunities to, uh, to, uh, register in advance of other people and they also have you know pay slightly different rates than outside when it comes to those uh, so we are recognizing our district residents with opportunities there and then uh, on the fire protection one uh, I just think that uh, originally when this was built as a as a uh, standalone volunteer fire department it really was meant to serve this small little pocket of community because there wasn't but again as that's grown we've formed contracts with agreement uh, contracts for service we've also formed shared services agreements uh, with just about every other local agency uh, you know we contract uh, with the county to serve some of their properties i can also understand there why we've taken out just the residents of the district and adding uh, and other served communities. So that's just my two cents, and that's compartmentalizing, strictly looking at a mission statement that, to your point, was written in bullet point and was uh, really exclusive in my mind to serving what was kind of a small, isolated pocket that no longer really is the case. Thank you, Eric. Any further comment from the board? Okay, um, any comment from the public on this on this particular issue? Yeah, one second. Uh, go ahead, Stephen. Hi. Um, first of all, I want to say, actually, I agree with everyone who just spoke. Um, I think uh, everyone's heart is in the right place. I commend Jeff for wanting to be sensitive to the needs of, uh, of a greater community. Um, as, as well, Siobhan, I uh, understand Bill's concern as well with political correctness. Uh, you saw my email earlier today. We'll discuss that next. But with a specific regard to this uh, proposed mission statement, I actually disagree with it because um, although we are serving more than uh, district residents, it's only district residents that are actually – footing the bill and paying paying the uh, uh, paying the cost paying the freight here, and um, with this mission statement, um, it suggests that no, we need to go further out and subsidize activities 
really outside the district. And I, I think that's a mistake. I think we should keep it focused uh, with the current mission statement. And, all, and maybe I, I, I do agree with the idea that we should reach out to other communities, but um, I think that that should be m maybe not part of uh, the mission statement um, that uh, perhaps a foundation or something uh, that could support um, what, which is uh, really charitable works should should be formed to um, to to serve outside the community. Um, also, I mean, with the fire district, for example, um, you know, we have the the taxpayers. Uh, we have CS thirteen. We have uh, uh, a shared services agreement, but you know, we we don't want to broaden this that we don't really have focus. And I think the proposed mission statement doesn't. Uh, adequately give focus. Now, as far as um, as far as the last item, I I agree. I think we can um, be more open and inclusive. I think that will make us a better community. But let's talk about that in the next section. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. <coughs> okay. Does anyone anybody else? or any other member of the public have anything to say on this particular agenda item? No. Okay, hearing none. Um, do I have a motion to approve this agenda item? A motion to approve uh, this agenda item of the proposed mission statement. Okay, Sivan is moved to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Leah, Leah is seconded. Any further discussion from the board? Okay, um, Tiffany, if you'd like to take roll call. Sure, Board President Naylor. Aye. Director Green. Aye. Director Oyserman. Aye. And Director Shea. No. Okay, motion passes three to one with, uh, of course, we are, I'm sorry, Isabella not in attendance. Thank you. We'll move on to district matter F2, proposed statement opposing systemic racism. Again, this was uh, presented at the last meeting. I don't think that the, um, the items have changed much at all, um, but this was to recognize um, some of the events that have happened in this neighborhood recently um, with regard specifically to the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, it made, it occurred to me that some level of support for the nonviolent um, protests associated with Black Lives Matter might be in order given their recent events. Um, naturally, there are several bullet points in this list that do um, extend past the limits of our jurisdiction. Um, that is certainly something that I was aware of when I wrote this and has been pointed out to me several times. Um, however, I wanted to open the dialogue and get people's feelings on this. Anybody like to start? Shall I go again? Yeah, go right ahead, Bill. Oh, God. All right. <clears throat> again, uh, let me reiterate uh, from the last. <clears throat> I really believe in the golden rule. I treat everybody the same. I may be a little gruff. I may be a dick at times. But I tell you, I just... I could never go along with this at all, especially the last couple of bullet points. I just, this is so far out and really we, we've got no business doing this. We've already uh, voted approval for the, uh, for the mission statement. Is that not enough? 
I mean, seriously, this carries things so far. And was it really our district? I just don't think so. I'm just sorry. I just, I don't see it the same way you do, Jeff, honestly. Um, I, I, but, I'm sure that you're not alone. No, I it's just, I just can't go along with this at all. I'm sorry. That's fine. Don't be sorry. Thank you for your opinion. Um, Leah, any thoughts? Um, Switzerland? I, I agree with this statement. I agree with Bill. I feel like this is really edging on the outskirts of what the district can and should be commenting on. Um, I realize it's in the worldwide zeitgeist and I think that that carries some weight and gravitas. So I'm glad that we're discussing it. Um, I'm really torn about whether or not at a board level that yeah, like what the what the etiquette is around this. Hmm. If that makes sense. Fair statement. Yeah. Anything else? Mm -mm. Okay. Siobhan? So I wholeheartedly agree with the statement that Jeff made. I also understand everybody's view and in general what the board normally does for staying within the confines, but at the same time, our district was in the Dixie School District. Our district is also had some not so fun um, situations arise and people wanted to stand up and voice their opinions on Black Lives Matter and I personally feel that we should be saying something. I understand that the district's jurisdiction, sorry, the district's jurisdiction, cannot say the word today, jurisdiction is fire, emergency response services, parks and recreation, street lights. But I do feel that by speaking about our parks and recreation and our fire and emergency, if we are saying, you know, hey, Black Lives Matter, you know, everybody has a right to be in this community and to be served in all of these aspects with the same respect and the same level as everybody else. And so that's kind of where I stand. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Appreciate your, your thoughts. Um, okay. Do we have any comment from the public? Yes, one second. Stephen, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you once again, and I appreciate everybody's comments. Um, I know, and actually I agree with, agree with you all. Um, the, do Marin Woods uh, lives matter? I, I think so, and that's one of the reasons why um, we have been trying to get the toxic waste cleaned up for eight years uh, at Marin Woods Plaza. And several times over these eight years, um, we have come to the board asking for uh, letters of support. And each time we were met with the same response that, hey, we can't comment on that. That's outside our ju jurisdiction. I happen to disagree because it, uh, you are an official voice of the community. And when uh, people's health is uh, at stake, I think um, there, you're the only moral authority. So in, in a way, um, you know, having a statement of inclusion, I, I think kind of makes sense. However, I'm really troubled with the language of your letter, um, uh, specifically the reference to Black Lives Matter, which will uh, cause a lot of confusion. Um, I hope you read my letter. I hope you actually visited um, uh, the, the videos uh, that were came out of these things. One was the Marinwood incident, um, and the other one was um, BLM protesters up in Nevada harassing some older women. The Black Lives Matter, the political movement, is it, it, it has really been 
co-opted. Um, some of you may know that it, it had some communist, uh, the, the originators were uh, communist, uh, self-avowed communists. Um, there are, there's violence going on across the country. I, I just think that, you know, by doing this now, all you're doing is putting the spotlight on our community, kind of like saying, hey, we're not racist here. You know, you're basically going to um, create controversy within the community. Now, I, I agree with the goals, and I think the best way we can do that um, is through, uh, w you know, broadening our recreation programs to include more cultures, more people outside the district. I, I, I've long thought that that is something that we could do as a community. But that way, we stay within our recreation role. And um, so I, 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 while I am sympathetic with the, uh, the goal of, of your letter, Jeff, I really think you're, you're, we're asking for trouble um, and it will be misunderstood. And quite frankly, I think a lot of community members may take issue with this. So to do it as a, uh, an official document would also be a mistake. Now, if you wanted to do it individually, I think that would be okay. But um, I, I think you should, you know, think of a way to do this where uh, we can persuade, do the right thing for the community and uh, broaden our, our, our reach. That's it. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate the input. Okay. Um, I've, I'll chime in last because I was the author of this document. So um, I want to also bring in comments I received from Isabella pertaining to this particular item as well. Again, I have spoken to no one other than Isabella on the board about either of these issues prior to this meeting. And her comments came in after the meeting uh, agenda was published. So I'm just sharing these with you. But essentially, um, her comments, which I do understand, were primarily to focus on the third bullet point of this list that I, um, I created in the first place, which really, really focuses on what we do, what our services are. And uh, that's um, essentially what she recommended that we looked at. So I'm just, just for full disclosure, I wanted to let you know what one of the other board members thought about this particular item. And um, I do not find any fault with her reasoning. Um, so I'd just like to add that. Does anyone else on the board have any comment after um, I made that statement on behalf of Isabella? Okay. Um, I've, get, I've gotten a lot of feedback on this issue. Um, I'm number one heartened that we've actually had the discussion in a public meeting, okay? Number two, I took the time to um, interview several people of color before I went ahead with this. And I think I have a much better understanding of what Black Lives Matter is and what it stands for, as opposed to all of the ancillary information that's out there in the public. Um, however, um, I am willing to entertain making a softer statement on behalf of the district if anyone would like to um, propose that. And again, I do have a tendency to think that um, what Isabella recommended, and that is talking about welcoming you know, all people into our community to use our programs and our services, does strictly conform to what services we provide, as opposed to um, <clears throat> 
extending our opinions to services that we do not. So Jeff, just to be clear, are you wanting to kind of shell the statement as is and possibly rewrite it again and then present it to the board? I don't want to rewrite it or present it again. I'm simply saying perhaps we could tonight vote to adopt simply the statement that the Marinwood Community Services District welcomes all people to our community to utilize our facilities, our parks, create playgrounds, participate in our programs in a safe and responsible manner. Would that generate any difference? Isn't that our mission statement? I'm just asking. Good point. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, the last sentence. Does that designate our district's parks, recreation, services, and facilities as open and available and welcoming of all people? So if that's what we're going to do, if we're just going to take bullet point number three from this statement, we do have bullet point number three in our mission statement. Mission statement. And okay, so fair enough. If, if, um, we're, if we're going to take out the other things due to the fact that our district's jurisdiction then that's fine. I understand what people are wanting to do there. Um, but then I don't see that we need to approve this or even approve just the third bullet because we have that in our wishes yes, already. I agree. Um, what I'm what I'm proposing at this point in time, given feedback that I've got both prior to this meeting and during this meeting, is that we withdraw this from consideration. Um, we have approved some small modifications to our mission statement and we just leave it at that. I am, however, gratified that we had the chance to discuss this in public. I think it's an important social issue, it should not be ignored, but I also understand that it's not in our particular um, zone to issue some of the um, considerations that I included when I first proposed it. Any further comments? Okay. Do I have to do anything else to withdraw this, Eric? No, there's no motion on the table. So unless right. the director wanted to make a motion, but uh, at this point you don't have a motion on the table, so you you can you can simply move on. And does anyone and want to make a motion? Okay, we're moving on. Thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it, and um, I am trying to listen and to learn except for, for Bill. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We're moving on to item number three, or F3. Fiscal year 2019-20, year-end profit and loss financial statement pre-audit. Eric? Great. Yep. Let's talk money. Um, so I gave you guys a fairly detailed staff report. These are our P&L statements for the fiscal year. So to be clear, this is simply the year's worth of operating revenue and expenditures. This does not represent long-term liabilities. Um, this isn't a balance sheet. This is a P&L statement beginning on July 1st of 2019 and ending on June 30th. Um, I have some of the highlights in my report, um, we, you know, as you'll see in there, we were able to uh, do fairly well from a financial uh, operating standpoint and wound up closing the year approximately $800,000 in the black, meaning approximately $800,000 in revenue received over expenditures made. Um, on, as of June 30th, 2020, we had a cash balance in our general fund of approximately $4.5 million. So in terms of cash flow, we had $4.5 million in our general fund as of June 30th. Um, a couple of the things to point out, um, we exceeded our uh, ad valorem tax projections by approximately $155,000. Um, I do want to point out, you see in my second bullet point, uh, through Q3, we had received $49,000 approximately in interest revenue based on our average daily cash balance uh, in our treasury fund. Um, late Friday evening, I actually received our Q4 interest 
uh, which added another approximately 18.5 thousand. So we ended the year with $68,000 in interest earned. That is based strictly on our average daily cash balance. There were years where we would earn, you know, five, six years ago, we were happy if we got a couple thousand and a lot of times we had to borrow money. So this, this basically shows our ability to maintain a positive cash flow and cash balance at a uh, fairly significant level throughout the course of an entire year. Uh, and then of course that 800,000 does not account for um, another 100,000 to be set aside as a board designated reserve. Um, so essentially that's 700,000 in revenue over expense. I include that in the budgeting process just so that it is accounted for and noted as we are trying to uh, balance out and show what our projected budgets for the year. Um, but those are not an actual expenditure because no money actually leaves our possession. Um, they just simply get noted on our balance sheet as a board designated reserve, uh, as well as noted within our audited financials. Uh, I believe this was the fourth year we concluded that. I could be wrong, it could be the third. So that builds, uh, since the board designated setting aside uh, a minimum of 100,000, that puts 300, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I meant to look this up, possibly 400,000 in the board designated reserve. Um, I also made some notes on here about some accounts receivable and accounts payable that were booked for accounting purposes as we knew that either the revenue or the payments were coming due and they were all for services either rendered or incurred during the fiscal year. It's just for various reasons. They didn't come in prior to the year close, but the proper accounting move was to designate them as a receivable or payable. Those do show up in the P&L. Um, they don't affect our immediate cash balance. Um, the strike team reimbursement um, we received shortly after uh, close uh, a little over $36,600 for a reimbursement for deploying on out of county strike teams with our fire department. Um, and we have also received payments now from the uh, Marin County Office of Ed for the fire protection that we provide to their buildings located on the county farm facility um, just on the outskirts of CSA 13. Um, and we also noted the payable of $49,604 for chief officer services to San Rafael. Uh, that bill has come in and in fact, that check has been issued. Um, and as well as our OPEB actuarial report, the billing was a little delayed because the reporting was a little bit delayed on that. Um, but all of those services have been completed and that bill has been paid as well. So those are reflected in our cash balance as well as our PL but I just wanted to make note of those. Um, and those will also show up in the audited financials as well as um, payables and receivables. Um, on the next page, uh, I, you know, I did some very high level uh, analysis of budgeted expectations versus reality when it came to our rec department uh, program revenue and specifically related to uh, fees for service and expenditures incurred. Um, in comparing with budget, we came in about $500,000 below our projected revenue. However, we also um, came in $420,000 below our projected expenditure. So that gives you a net of $80,000. Now, this is not $80,000 that we lost. It is $80,000 that we did not earn due to reduced program sizes. Um, as I mentioned in several meetings, our, our expenditures are variable when it comes to our rec programs. The more people we serve, the more it costs in staffing, the more it costs in supplies, the more it costs in other services rendered. Um, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, otherwise the rec program wouldn't make any money uh, in the best of years. Uh, but at, at an $80,000 clip, I was very pleased with staff, um, especially Luke and his team, to be very mindful of recognizing when, okay, how much to scale back, where can we scale back. Um, I obviously feel very uh, uh, badly for a lot of our staff who weren't able to work um, due to program shutdowns, especially some of the immediate impacts to our preschool staff um, and our after school staff in the spring. Uh, in summertime, um, hours were reduced, but we tried to hire as many people as we could while living within the confines of the stable groups. Um, so I feel like we were able to get a lot of people working. 
um, with the exception of our pool where we had a significant decline in lifeguards and pool attendance um, because we had severely reduced pool operation. Um, so that is kind of the nature of the beast and the, hopefully um, that can get back into, uh, into some level of normal come next spring and summer, but you know, who knows? So, you know, in summary, um, I, I feel district staff uh, across the board were able to manage financials uh, successfully through the first portion of this health crisis. Um, obviously, you know what our budget is for this fiscal year that we're in now. Uh, it is conservative. We are projecting a modest net operating gain, um, but I, nor the world's greatest economist, can tell you what exactly is in front of us, and we keep a very watchful eye on it. Uh, again, Luke and his team are in constant uh, thought and creation on what can we do. Uh, it's difficult in our position because a lot of times we are receiving guidance from public health a week or two in advance. So while they put a lot of thought in it, we are not able to really finalize things until we get the final what is and is not allowable. Uh, Luke will talk more about fall programming in his PNR report. Uh, but my point here is uh, we did well. This isn't a time to get complacent. We uh, certainly have a very murky uh, and unclear picture ahead of us, but we will continue to be very diligent in our expenditures and uh, closely monitoring things like cash flow and revenue. Um, but right now, we again are in a very stable and uh, healthy position. Very good, thank you. Anyone on the board have any questions or comments on the pre-audit statement? Can I say something? Absolutely. Um, when I came on board several years ago, we were in the red every single year. This is one hell of a turnaround. I, I can't tell you how happy I am with Eric and Luke and the whole team taking care of business. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Thank you, Bill. Any not other only, comments? Not only are we not in the red, we may have a modest profit during a pandemic. So thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Yeah. Yeah, but to Bill's point, this has been a long-term trend. I mean, uh, I remember as well um, serving on the fire commission <laughs> where we were borrowing money from the uh, district to pay um, payrolls or from the uh, county to pay payroll and paying interest to them yeah. for that privilege. Um, um, since this, um, since Eric and his team have come aboard and his team has changed and he's evolved this over time, but we have he and his staff have maintained um, that forward momentum. And we are, irrespective of some huge debt that's long-term and in the future, um, managing cash flow and profitability um, very, very well. And it's very heartening to see. Leah, anything from you? Okay. I guess we can move on. Oh, public. Oh, public comment. One second. Oh, yep, we got somebody. All right, yeah, one second. Go ahead, Stephen. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, things are moving in the right direction, um, and it's been a challenging year. Uh, I don't quite understand the reference to profitability. I guess maybe you mean that in general because you don't actually you don't actually see where things are profitable we don't really understand the, the various components of of our revenue as far as i can tell uh, maybe you have a more granular understanding of it but it's certainly not presented in a way for me to easily understand now i, I will say as a community member i look at um you know how well you're doing it, from several factors. The first is, of course, uh, you know, how, how is the cash flow being managed? The second is, how well are you achieving your various, uh, uh, your, your mission statement? And I, in that regards, I think your, 
falling short. Um, while you may pat yourself on the back this year about, um, you know, hey, we're, we're in the black, um, I look at it as, hey, I haven't had a chance to go swimming in the pool. Uh, you, you've made extremely, uh, extremely high cost to swim in, in our pool that we pay taxes for. Um, the kids, there's been fewer rec programs, and I, I see the maintenance of the park um, and our trails and open space really being ignored. Um, the uh, services for seniors are very, pretty much non-existent, um, and, um, and I do actually agree with, with Jeff's proposal that we do more outreach um, to other communities, but we really don't see much of that. So uh, um, I just caution everybody to not not be settled with with this um, this report here because we really have to evaluate it in terms of how well we're doing. Uh, lastly, the um, long term liabilities and the proposed capital outlays are uh, of huge concern, and I feel that we're embarking on a path right now that could very well swamp our district finances in a, a time of extreme economic uncertainty. Um, the good things about our district is we've got a hell of a wreck business, uh, and overall our costs are pretty low so and and we've got uh, a steady flow of tax revenue so if we manage everything right we're going to get to where we want to be we're going to be able to pay our pension expenses we're going to be able to have great programs great open space great rec programs but i i feel that um the only measurement that is used is what did we do last year and that we met what we did last year, as opposed to um, a true visionary um, uh, statement of purpose and achieving the goal. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, let's see. Item F4, district manager report. All right. Sure. Let me get to that page. Um, okay, a few items of note. I'm gonna uh, not necessarily in order here. Um, I, I, I want to put out, and I meant to actually include a flyer in the packet, and I forgot. But all the information is on our website, and I did include uh, the link to that. Uh, we do have an upcoming Chipper Day. This is funded through the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority that was recently formed with the passage of Measure C. Um, this is a residential program in which residents can um, self-register to uh, have uh, basically help parts in their homes and uh, create more fire resistance by getting rid of uh, you know flammable vegetation that is directly on their property. Um, and if they can do that level of work and lay it on the curb, then on the chipper day, uh, it will come by and be chipped and hauled away at no cost to the public. Again, I did throw a link in there for this uh, where you can get additional information. I put something out on Nextdoor. We put something on our Facebook page. We will continue to do it. Um, it is a first come, first serve event, but it can handle up to, uh, they, they project they can do up to 60 curbside um, pickups. Um, the other note on this is we do, Santa Fe um, has hired a team of vegetation inspectors that are also doing residential inspections. This also applies to Marinwood as part of our agreements with Santa Fe. Um, and they are certainly looking at various properties. Um, on, they risk properties that they deem. They're actually trying to contact the owner to uh, advise. And uh, when they can't get in touch with the owner, they simply leave a uh, leave a report and a recommendation to clear certain vegetation from what they can see um, which would be you know from the right of way in the front of their home um, the uh, biannual opeb actuarial report was completed moving on um, and that is going to be presented next month um, as has been mentioned a few times in this meeting uh, that'll give a picture of our uh, 
of our current OPEB liabilities um, stretched out over 30 years. Um, and it's an actuarial assessment. Um, one thing I didn't necessarily mention in my other report, though it should be stated, is we did contribute another $100,000 towards mm -hmm. our OPEB trust. Um, that's just to be used for useful retiree health care. Um, so we have, uh, that's the third year we have been managing that as well. Um, I'm also putting out references for our financial audit, um, as well as seeking RFPs. Uh, our current firm, RJ Ricciardi, did submit a proposal at the exact same cost as previous years, but utilizing a different audit partner. Um, we can no longer utilize Michael O'Connor from RJ as the lead audit partner in that because he has done it for uh, uh, a number of years for us. And at this point, we need to move on to a different partner, but we can certainly utilize RJ Ricciardi. Um, and based on some of the initial information I am getting, um, people are going to be hard pressed to uh, match their costs and especially at their level of service. Um, I'm learning that uh, they were actually a very reasonably priced firm to do our work. Finally, I want to talk about Prop 68. Um, this is the uh, Earth's Environment and Water Bond Act of 2018. Um, God, it seems like a year and a half ago now, I submitted an initial application uh, for eligibility for this. Um, we were deemed eligible, and we are going to have uh, available to us up to 170, uh, just under $178,000 um, to be spent on a capital outlay for recreation purposes. Um, it's pretty strict in what you can do. It cannot perform repairs. It cannot perform maintenance. Um, this is capital outlay, but it can replace. For instance, if you have a cracked window, you can't fix the crack, but you can replace the window, so to speak. Um, if uh, we can't reshell the pool, but we can build a new pool. Um, so on and so forth. So it, it can't be used for maintenance and it, it cannot um, supplant other funding. It can only supplement or identify new projects. Um, if we have shortfalls in identified funding, it can be used for that. Um, obviously, staff and I are going to spend a little bit more time talking about this, and we will uh, most likely bring it to the commission level to get some more feedback. Um, I attended what turned out to be a two and a half hour required online workshop today. Um, through the Office of Grants and Local Services for the state of California. Um, that certainly provided more information and I've got a lot more materials that more clearly uh, represent the, uh, the uh, restrictions that come with this and there is some of them. So, uh, you know, obviously we have a lot of projects that could use one of the big ones we've been talking about as a possibility is uh, replacing our aged um, and starting to kind of deteriorate playground equipment here at the park um, to still use to be upgraded and replaced, especially considering when one small piece of it breaks, it costs us thousands of dollars to be able to order a replacement part and still have it meet code and pass through a playground, a certified playground inspector. Uh, so that's one option, but there's a lot of options, and so we'll be seeking a lot of feedback on that. Um, we have time on this. I will be bringing this to a board level in a near future meeting because the board is going to need to pass a resolution, uh, generally accepting uh, the funds and uh, stating that we want to move forward with the project within the scope of the plan. So that will be coming as a formal action item. It doesn't state what a project will be, just that yes, we want to take on these funds, and yes, we will live within the program requirements um, and go from there. There is a 20% uh, match required, and that's 20% of total cost, not 20% of the award, which is slightly different. So if, uh, if a project costs $200,000, let's say, we have to match $50,000 of that. It's not 20% uh, of the 177. It's actually 25% of the total award to equal one fifth of the total project cost. Um, I might have lost some of you with the math, but just trying to make that part clear. Um, otherwise, uh, that's what I have. I'm happy to take any questions on any of the other stuff. Anybody have any questions for Mr. No, for Leah. Bill? 
regarding the chipper days yes the, the uh you mentioned that the san rafael inspectors are going around in the neighborhood yes and, and they can only see what's in front of them and that's the uh, property owner gets the information and somebody uh call them and allude to a problem uh, in their backyard yes, i would suggest uh they can send an email yes they can there is some contact and i can put some contact information on there they can contact uh one of the two lead vegetation inspectors who are the full-time year round they have a bunch of seasonal they can send me an email and i will gladly pass it on to them um, in terms of uh properties that residents have expressed concern with and request a uh, inspection and a contact with the property owner. All right, we've okay. we've already done some of that. Okay. Thank but you. yeah, you're very welcome. August 24th is that date, by the way. So it is coming up um, and we need, uh, I haven't checked recently how many are registered for it, but uh, tomorrow morning I'll push it back out through our social media channels again. Um, and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, and I did attach the flyer that um, we created in partnership with Firewise um, to go out to the social media blast. So hopefully people are sharing it that way as well. Okay, um, Siobhan, any questions? Okay, I have one. Um, when on Prop 68 funding, when do we need to get um, final approval for what we're proposing in order to qualify for funding? Is this something that's going to happen in this calendar year? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, it could, but that would be moving relatively fast. Uh, sorry, Jeff, I know you can't really hear me when I'm saying this. Um, the, the deadline to submit projects, if you can just bear with me for one second as I flip through and maybe to page four here. Um, Submit application package by December of 2021 <laughs> is, the, is the deadline. That said, it is open and we can move as fast as we are able to move. That is the deadline. I don't okay. know that we'll be able to move quick enough to get it in this calendar year. Uh, I do want to get some uh, appropriate feedback and some test on it. Uh, don't like to bring a list of, uh, create a short list. And some of this is also going to be based on, you know, what is affordable uh, within that scope. $177,000 isn't small change, but it spends very quickly when you're looking at capital outlay. I see. Okay. You must be dealing with a governmental agency. You are 100% right. <laughs> okay. Very good. Who I will add are yeah. not the most dynamic uh, required webinar presenters you've ever sat through either. <laughs> Well, congratulations on staying awake. Anyway, any other questions for Eric? Okay, questions from the public. Yeah, one second. Stephen, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, so I do have a, a couple of questions. First of all, uh, regarding the, uh, uh, the funding, the grant, uh, it's great that we're going after that. Um, you talk about recreation equipment. One of the things that I personally um, have a passion for, I, I would love to see us have upgraded uh, playground equipment uh, with, uh, you know, the natural uh, adventure uh, playground equipment that is available. It u utilizes timbers. It is safe. It, you know, we have certified um, it is certifiable, I guess, would, would be the word. Um, but it's a lot more interesting to kids, and it encourages kids to explore uh, their environment. And one of the things that we have that is so nice about um, our district is, is our open space. And so anything we can do to connect people to the land, I think, is a really great thing. So I would urge uh, fresh thinking on playground equipment and actually I'd love to see if we could put some more in um, as far as chipper days go uh, and communication I, I've actually said this before you Eric talked that you're using next door you say your social media blast 
Well, not everybody's on social media, so you really have to um, you have to broaden your reach outside of social media because you're really you're getting a small number of people. And I don't mean not everybody's online. I mean that a lot of people hate next door. A lot of people hate uh, social media. A lot of people just won't go to them. So the old-fashioned flyers and um, posters and um, information boards, they work really well. Um, and for those of us who live in um, areas where there's a lot of vegetation, that's, I guess that's most of us, but, but um, we sh should be the first ones or we should definitely have the flyers delivered to us so we know about this great opportunity. Um, to relieve our fire rates. Um, that's all I have to say for the moment. Uh, hopefully the audit will um, produce light this year um, and maybe help people think of ways that they can um, uh, you know, just get a better state of mind and quality of life. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Moving on, item G, Fire Department Matters, draft minutes of Fire Commission meeting, August 4th. Anybody on the board have comments or questions? Nobody? Okay, any questions or comments from the public? No, one second. Yes, Stephen. goes to our what I think is one of our missions it is is providing a great open space um, uh, you know if you if you can move these these fields they're going to be needed uh, uh, wildlife and, and uh, really to decrease the quality of life we all share in this beautiful uh, valley and county thank you Stephen Okay. Item G2, Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. Uh, we don't have the Chief this evening. Do you have anything to comment on, Eric? Uh, the only thing he wanted to make sure that wasn't in his report was they are going to be vacating their temporary administrative offices that were located at 1600 Los Gamos, just right down the road from us by the Y. Um, as of August 24th, they will be moved into the new Public Safety Center in Central Santa Fe. So it's a bummer because I sure did like having them so close by, but uh, it is what it is. Yeah, understood. Okay, does anyone have any questions for Eric or comments on the uh, Chief's report? I understand we had a, um, at least one firefighter out on a um, extended it was Caesar, right? Out on an extended call by yeah. fire. Okay. Yes, he uh, joined the Santa Fe team along with uh, firefighters from a few other stations across the county to form a uh, strike battalion. Um, and they kind of jumped all over Northern California for 14 days. Got it. Okay. That's He was out for two weeks straight? Yep. Wow. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any comments or questions on the Chief's report? And we have a comment from the public. Uh, Stephen? Yeah, one second. Stephen, are you there? Yeah, I, 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 you're not, you didn't, 
Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, now. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I didn't see it on mute. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just pointing the chief isn't here because I actually wanted to uh, to ask him a question. Last, I think it was la last week sometime, we heard a huge explosion uh, near our neighborhood. It sounded like commercial fireworks going off, and I was I was a little shaken by that, as were my neighbors. We all got out in the street, and I was, and I know they're working on the dash right around the corner, so there is an extra level of concern. Uh, does anyone know what happened um, that particular night? Um, I'm sure there were calls in about that. I don't know off the top of my head, but my understanding uh, was the same as yours, that uh, I believe there was a firework, but we can find out. Okay, okay so the other uh, thing I just kind of want us to keep focused on is the percentage of calls that we are making um, outside of, of our district and um, note that we are funding all the pensions, all the everything got to change our uh, relationship uh, with San Rafael. Hopefully to merge it, I think that would make the most sense, but in merging, we have to make sure that we are fair to the taxpayer. What, what, what is going on now, I think, is unfair to the taxpayers, and it's actually unfair to the firefighters, too, who deserve to know that uh, someone is going to back up their promises, the promises that have been made to them. So please continue to work on that. I think Eric made a suggestion that that is exactly what is up to Eric and I and all of us. Um, say thank you and, and keep, keep at it. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, item G3, next fire commission meeting, September 1st. And we'll move on to Item H, Park and Rec Matters. Minutes, draft minutes of the PNR Commission meeting of July 28th. Any questions or comments? Nothing from the board? Okay. Public. One second. Yes, go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, how can you tell what's going on here? It, it's really, uh, these these reports, they're, they're unacceptable. You're, you're also reporting them, and they could, you know, you can make this stuff public, but we want to know what's going on in both our fire commission as well as our um, uh, park and rec commission. It's, you know, it's not a, a private government here. I mean, Sometimes you think people don't care, but but we all care. All of us actually use the outdoor space, and of course, all of us are together firefighters. So, if this is what we're paying um, Tiffany to create, I think maybe we need to reevaluate, um, you know, the value that that taxpayers are receiving for this this basically. Report that has absolutely no meaning in it at all, but maybe it's maybe it's designed to create obfuscation of what's going on. I, I would hope not. Okay, understood. Um, Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to <coughs> the PNR maintenance activity report. Luke. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so right now we're uh, wrapping up, well, I guess we're two days into our final week of our summer camp program, uh, our ninth week this summer, and um, it's gone extremely well. Um, we're very pleased with um, just how smoothly things have gone in spite of a lot of new 
uh, regulations and um, guidelines to be following. Uh, the staff and the, the campers and the parents have all um, adapted extremely well and worked together to um, allow us to, to run this program in a way that uh, provided a quality uh, child care program for, for uh, we served about 378 individuals um, this summer. And um, I'm just extremely uh, happy with how it went. Very appreciative to our part-time counselor, camp director staff, um, as well as our uh, full-time staff working to, to put this summer on. And um, I'm just very glad that we were able to, to do this in spite of some of the challenges that were presented. So we've got um, just a few days left and um, and everything. Yeah, so far, no, no, uh, no big drama to speak of beyond the normal uh, hiccups that happen in a normal summer. So I'm very pleased about that. Uh, as mentioned before, we, we were able to open the pool on July 20th. Uh, for lap swim with um, some some limitations and I'm very pleased with how popular that's been. Uh, we've filled almost every time slot that's been available and um, we're continuing to open up things for the fall. Um, and we'll be announcing the fall schedule of um, swimming shortly as we finalize um, our staffing situation and when um, our the lifeguards that are in high school get their schedules and know what we're able to, to continue through the fall. So we'll be announcing that soon, but so far um, it's been nice to be able to offer um, at least some lap swim availability to the public. And it's been really nice to see uh, some of our regulars back, back out there getting some exercise and enjoying the pool. Um, so that's been great. As Eric mentioned, we are still awaiting guidance on what we're allowed to do this fall for our recreation programming, but um, we're tentatively planning to uh, continue with our, our preschool program in some capacity and our after school program in uh, whatever capacity that we're able to do. And we've made plans um, with what we think the guidelines will allow us to do. And, and we're um, expecting to receive the official guidance sometime this week. Uh, as to what um, you know, what types of programs we'll be allowed to run this fall, and so um, our preschool program, our normal traditional program, we've decided to push back um, a little bit, and in the meantime, we will run an alternative program that's a little bit smaller, more outdoor based, and um, uh, shorter hours, just to be able to accommodate a program for the preschool age group until we're um, until it's we're allowed to run a more indoor traditional program, which we will um, get started as soon as it, it makes sense to do that. So uh, we're still putting the details together and getting all that information and we'll be um, announcing what all those programs will look like in the coming weeks once we know for sure what we're allowed to do. But um, the rec staff has been working really hard, uh, working with the other um, rec departments in the county um, and putting together kind of plan A, plan B, plan C of um, if they say this, we'll be able to run this type of program. If they say this, we'll run this type of program. And just making sure that we're ready to go. So once the guidelines are announced, we can kind of pivot and get that up and running as soon as possible. And we really want to be able to provide a program for the kids that have been uh, cooped up at home. They're going to be doing um, school from, you know, virtually. And, and we want to be able to provide a place for them to come and uh, get, get away from their houses and, and get some other uh, environments and, and alternative activities. So. Uh, we're excited to be able to do that, and we will be launching that as soon as um, we're, we're kind of given the green light and we can mobilize for that. Uh, we're also hoping to receive uh, guidance on other types of recreation programs um, for like our, our recreation classes for youth and adults. Um, I, I believe we're going to be limited mostly to outdoor programs, and so uh, we're working on, on planning a schedule for those. Um, we're hoping to have some indoor program uh, opportunities, but we're just going to have to wait and see what the, the health department uh, tells us we can do. So we're working with our instructors to see what we can do. And um, regardless, we'll have some outdoor stuff going on this fall, as well as some virtual classes being offered um, for, for some of our indoor programs. So all of that's being worked on and will be announced in the coming weeks. And the um, staff have been working hard to, to put together uh, our fall offering of programs and classes. Uh, to be able to do as much as we can uh, with the limitations in place. Um, on the parks maintenance side of things, our um, big priority right now is uh, cleaning out, moving out of the current uh, park shop facility uh, to prepare for moving into our temporary workspace that we'll be using uh, during the demolition and construction of the new parks maintenance facility. So um, we've been hard at work cleaning out, boxing up, 
um, getting rid of and, and getting things stored and ready to, to move into our, our new space. So that's been a big task, but it's going smoothly so far. And I feel like we're on track to uh, be able to make that happen in time um, to get that area cleaned up in time for um, things to be, you know, for the demolition. Uh, we've also been monitoring the open space uh, during this, this shelter in place time. Uh, there's been a lot of increased activity on the trails. Um, which has been great to see so many people, um, including lots and lots of seniors and, and all ages out uh, utilizing our trails, uh, making use of the open space, exploring what our uh, backyard has to offer out here. But we've also seen some things, some hazards showing up by some, a lot of rope swings, a lot of bike jumps being built and things that um, present a liability to the district. So the park staff has been monitoring all of that regularly. We've been adding signage to places um, to make sure that the trails are being used correctly as to how they were designated. And we've been having to take out some of the um, fun but uh, dangerous hazards that have been popping up here and there. So that's kind of been a constant uh, monitoring situation, but going well. Um, and uh, upcoming projects, besides moving into our temporary uh, workspace for the, the coming year, um, we're making some repairs to the community center, doing a big deep clean that we do every year after our summer camp program ends. Uh, as well as reviving the park after all of the use. We'll be doing some uh, turf maintenance, um, some patio maintenance, and just getting the community center cleaned up for the next season of activities and programs, which um, we have a small window to, to do that between when the camps end and when our next programs start up that we try to get as much done as we can and um, kind of get everything um, uh, revived for, for the next season. So that's what staff have been doing, and um, it's been, uh, uh, going well, and um, I think it's going to be a busy next uh, few weeks, but uh, are there any questions? Oh, sorry. Anyone from the board have questions, please? Nothing. Okay, um, I have a question. Um, putting up signage to keep mountain bikers from using paths, how, how effective is that? That's a great question, Jeff. Um, I think on the on the one hand, so with the new Pawnee Trail, um, we've seen uh, a huge increase in uh, mountain biking on the trails in general. And what we found is there are some trails that have just some social trails up that weren't being used much, but with all of the increased mountain biking activity, bikers are dropping into trails from way up high that they didn't used to have good access to. And they're coming down not knowing that these trails eventually meet up with hiking only trails farther down. They're sort of mm. un, unofficial uh, social trails that eventually connect with official trails. So the bikers aren't doing anything um, necessarily wrong. They don't they don't know what trail they're on or you know that this can eventually connect and they they end up at a spot that's that's a hiking only spot. So. Um, it wasn't an issue before we weren't seeing that kind of activity but now with all the increased activity it's just a matter of informing them this is a trail that is that is for hiking only versus biking only some people may not um look at the signs they may not uh pay attention or obey them but i think uh a lot of people are just ignorant that, that, that these are hiking only trails because the um, the trail map's not super clear because some of these trails are unofficial and it's just a new phenomenon with all the um the, the, the good access that's been provided by the new trail situation. So Understood. we're just trying to do our do our part to at least people that will follow the rules, they now know what they are. So right, right. So I'm are just, we go sorry. I'm just wondering if somebody's going fifty miles an hour down a trail and they see a sign that says, hey, by the way, you can't go here, what's their alternative? Um, well, we're trying to put the signage at the start of where these trails would meet. So if they're coming down Queenstone Fire Road, and uh, then a, there is a, a social trail that, that goes down that will eventually connect with the Blackstone Canyon Trail, the Horn Trail. Um, at the place where they would make that transition, that's where we say, this is a hiking only trail, no biking permitted. They could continue down the fire road. As opposed okay, to so they, they do have an alternative. Absolutely, so it'd be, it'd be at the transition, not somewhere random down at the middle of Got the it. trail. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That answers Fun? my question, Jeff. No. no, that answers my question. Okay, um, any other questions from the board? From the public? We've got this. Yes, Stephen. Yeah, um, so uh, yes, I have another uh, question. Uh, first of all, the, the gifts camp uh, went well. They went well at 
assume we have no health issues. Um, uh, I'd be curious if we did. I was concerned about it uh, at the beginning of the summer, but uh, now that we know more about this uh, COVID, it seems like this is a really not acceptable place. Um, maybe you can address that. Um, the school uh, is, was a great disappointment to find that it was going to cost me 1500 bucks to do my normal swimming routine that I, I do every year um, in the pool. And, and it's particularly maddening be, that in years past with, with, with the commotion, we had a drop in fee as low as a couple bucks um, for people from San Francisco. It seems like wherever you, whoever figured out the pricing didn't really fully take into account the community needs first. In Petaluma, the, the fee, the drop-in fee for that was $27, which I uh, find a comparison. I, I know there's not a lot of schools open, so there's probably less uh, traffic and more demand than me in the pool, but, but I sure, surely would like to be there, and I know other people would like to be there as well. Um, with regards to the uh, trails, yeah, it's great uh, that we have uh, a lot more trail use. Um, it sounds to me from the least description that the school would be really lacking in very clear signage. I haven't been up there recently, so I don't know what that's all about. But uh, that's probably worthwhile looking at, and uh, maybe we can produce a map or have a secondary map. I do know most of my hike, favorite hiking happens in the main park, and I do know I, I have problems with kids all the time, young kids really mostly, racing their bikes through where you know schools are walking and do there's dog walkers, and maybe we need to have some sort of speed limit um, in the flat accessible areas of the park. With regards to um, flat accessible areas, I, I think this is the prime area for seniors and people that have mobility issues. It's a tough flat issue. It's, it's fully shaded, and it's really the best part of the park, and we don't have, ma we don't have any density there. It, and I, I think, as Linda points out, whenever she's been at these meetings, she still would like to have safety around um, county municipal parks so she doesn't have to worry if uh, the split grid is too far down or, or out of whack. Um, overall, I, I think we need to focus on um, a broader, uh, broader community needs. We need to focus on seniors because we, it, it never seems, nothing ever seems to get done. And we also ask for pickleball uh, lines. <laughs> Very very low cost improvements to our parks. For some reason, we can't get the pickleball lines. So, um, you know, I, I think we need to, there's a, there's a leadership issue here and it needs to be taken seriously. Now, as far as the other programs go, and hopefully we're going, going well, um, I just wanted to make note of another thing is, you know, a lot of times I come by the park at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it looks like everyone has gone home for the day, and I don't, and, and it's pretty regular, actually, that, that I see that. I don't, I, I assume uh, that my guys are working full time, but um, gosh, I, if they're paying full time, they, they should be working full time. I may be leaving my seat for that. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Any comments? I mean, I'm happy to address any of that if uh, like, well, there's a lot of, a lot of points made there. Um, yeah. um, if anyone wants to hear, uh, but I um, one one couple of things just uh, that I, I feel are um, worth worth noting there is, uh, fortunately, we did not have any um, known cases of uh, COVID-19 in our camp program this summer, so we're really thankful um, for that. Uh, we did not have to shut down any of our um, any of our 12 kid pods this summer, so 
very grateful that our program was able to run as planned um, all the way through, um, at least through uh, the second day of, of week nine. So um, that's great. Um, as to uh, some of the other points there, um, yeah, definitely with the increased activity on the trails, um, signage is something we definitely have to look at. Um, thankfully, the new Pawnee uh, revived Pawnee, uh, improved trail um, does have a, a lot of amazing, uh, really, really well listed signage up there, um, listing where the trails are and, and how that goes. And our trail map is um, is pretty detailed, so. Um, the main thing has just been uh, letting bikers know uh, where and where the bikes are allowed and not allowed um, now that there's um, a, a lot of better access. And also with the influx of e-bikes, the electric assist bikes, um, a lot more people are getting up into the higher trails uh, than where they used to be able to access that. So we're just um, dealing with a lot more traffic on trails we didn't used to have bikes on um, because of just how hard it is to get up there. Uh, so we're just adapting and um, and adding information um, as as we can. And I've been working with uh, a couple of different um, uh, people, including uh, some of our firefighters that are mountain bikers, and just to see where are people, um, where where's the traffic going, and where are the conflicts, and where are, where are we finding uh, issues, and, and we're trying to address those as we can. So um, it's an ongoing process, but um, ultimately the the trails are are. Everyone's been very respectful, um, the hikers, the bikers, and things have been going very well. We're just trying to, um, in, you know, prevent any any accidents or, or um, people com confronting each other in a way that they weren't expecting. So that's um, been going well, but we still have more to do, and we'll just continue to work on that. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to address there. Very good. Thank you. Jeff? Jeff, if you don't mind, if I could follow up. Two weekends ago, my wife and I hiked the Ponte Ridge Trail all the way up to the top to close to where it met up with Queenstone. Um, I can attest to the e-bikes. We saw plenty of those. Uh, and we saw plenty of other people hiking, uh, a lot of bikers on that path. That said, uh, and even for my wife who doesn't do a lot of hiking uh, in that, that kind of environment, I, everybody was incredibly courteous. Everybody, um, I would say 90 percent of the bikers would mask up um, as soon as they saw that they were coming up against somebody. Every single hiker was masking up as soon as they saw people. The county is working on signage as part of that project as they move along. Uh, and they're also working on trying to eliminate uh, many of the social trails that are unauthorized that have built up over the years. Um, they're still in process of completing this project. Um, building the trail itself was part one. Um, it's a wonderful trail if anybody gets the chance to go up Ponte and uh, my experiences were incredibly positive with all of the run-ins we had with the people that were out there just both from a conscientious standpoint from the health perspective as well as hikers really slowing down staying out of the way my wife and I were certainly trying to find spots to step over whenever we would see or hear them coming in either direction um, so that was good, and they are starting with a lot of the signage the county is putting up as part of their project as well. So it, it is, it is certainly uh, coming along, but the project is is certainly not done yet either. Where's the trailhead? Um, the best there's two places that you can access that are simple. Um, you can actually access it from the multi uh, from the bike path, the Pacheco pathway that runs alongside 101. Uh, there's an opening there, or if you go to the top of Heatherstone where the water tank is, uh, there is an opening there, and they have a lot of signage right there that says, you know, points you in the right direction. Um, and I also want to say I took a lot of time to look at some of the areas where they had done work to the old Ponte Fire Road, um, and that is all coming across very good, too, in terms of renaturalizing it. Um, they're closing it off and things like that. So the work is coming along pretty well. Got it. I have a question yeah. for you. Um, I take a walk, about a two and a half, three mile walk every morning, and I am not wearing a mask. Am I breaking the law here? Um, you are supposed to be wearing a mask if you are within six feet of somebody else um, in the event that you cannot provide that level of distance. I don't know that you are breaking the law per se, because the law says that you uh, don't need to wear one when you are exercising, but it seemed to be the very common practice when you can't maintain six feet. Um, 
and not to mention, you know, our encounters were seconds. You know, uh, yeah. they they weren't long encounters when we would see somebody. We stopped and talked to a few people occasionally, and at those times, you know, I mean, we put on a mask because everybody else was, and it felt like the socially acceptable and responsible thing to do. So we carried them in our, our pockets. We saw people. Uh, there's points of this trail that are fairly narrow, um, without a lot of easy area to just step off to the side. So as a courtesy, we would put them on when we saw people hiking the other direction or biking towards us in either direction. Got it. Okay. Um, it was unclear to me whether I, I needed to have one with me or whatever. So I try to start in the dark and hopefully not see another human being when I'm taking my walk. Okay. Thank you. Hello. If anyone's interested, John Campos going to update on the uh, Pawnee Fire on the next commission meeting. Right. Thank you. Okay. Where are those being held these days? Do you have them outside or are you having them? No, we're, we have them right here in the same conference room that we're meeting right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so if a bunch of strangers show up in your living room, Jeff, that's us having a meeting. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you got, we used to meet around a picnic table. Yeah, no, they're all being conducted virtually, just like they that. are. Okay, uh, as well right. as the fire commission. Okay, hell no. Okay, very good. But thank you, Bill, for that. Um. Okay. Next fire commission. I'm sorry. Next PNR commission meeting is the 28th of July. We'll move on to item I, board member. Items of interest request for future agenda items. Anything from anyone on the board? No? This is probably, I'm, I'm gonna not, not delay us too much longer, but this is something that occurred to me while I was getting ready for this meeting. Um, it's that time of year when we would normally be going out, um, I think on Friday night for those music in the park events. And I just wanted to, um, say, I sincerely hope that we get to do those again next year because I'm missing them. I really am. And um, just to recognize Bill Hansel for all the work and Luke for all the work of putting those on, I certainly hope they'll come back. <clears throat> Anybody else have anything? Okay. Um, public? Yeah, I'm public. Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, uh, so uh, actually this didn't address a couple of um, the issues. I was concerned about um, some uh, problems in uh, in a main park uh, along, I guess what you call the dog zone. There's, there's a lot of seniors there. They, they have walking sticks. They, they're elderly, some very elderly. And this park of ours is just a, a godsend. There are things we can do to address this population. So that was number one. I, I, I really, you know, I please don't ignore this problem. They, you know, they're taxpayers. They, they have a right to use that park just like everybody else. And then also there was actually nothing said about um, the, the point of, are, are, our, are our guides working full time? I hope that, uh, you know, they probably don't punch the clock, but it, it really reflects poorly on the management to see, um, to see that there's no one working in the park. I don't know that I have a, a nice statement, but um, I, I would want you to keep your eye on the ball here and see if we can get this work. Uh, and we expect them to work during work hours doesn't seem like it's, it's getting done. The other thing is that the equity, um, how the pricing was figured out, it has never been explained um, with the crew. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you're continuing to see them, but um, you know, basically the way that this was priced, uh, it's just too much, it's too much for them. Um, it, apparently you're hiring uh, uh, extra kids to be um, lifeguards, but I, the way I look at it is, well, we got to, you know, the staff has the same qualifications and they actually have had a lot of, a lot of time off. Maybe, you know, for the main pond, we could utilize their, them for lifeguard uh, training. So, so I, 
definitely not a lot of it, the focus seems to be on the staff, on the insiders, uh, and really very little consideration for the public and the staff and what they do. Mm-hmm. What we can do to focus them. Oh, and there was, there's one last thing too, and that is I, I brought this up last month and it hasn't changed, but you know, the Friday night beer party in the park. I, in my opinion, I, I love to see guys out there having fun and I understand relaxing with friends is, is good, but in these COVID times, I mean, basically, I'm sure there's a lot of people that won't, will not walk past that group because no one is social distancing and it's, it's, it's not right. We're, we're, we're a community and we need to consider everybody as one. Who may be at risk for developing, you know, COVID. So, uh, and if you're going to do anything regarding safety, uh, maybe maybe we can look at ways to educate the guys uh, about uh, social distancing. I mean, I, I like what it says, but but it, it is to the point where it's almost more of a you know Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate it. Okay. Anything else from the board or the public? Jeff, before you adjourn, um, I noticed about probably over halfway through the meeting that uh, it wasn't recording properly. So I, I, I think we're going to have an issue with this recording, and I restarted the recording process. Uh, right around the time we started talking about fire. So we might have some issues with the recording in this meeting. I see, okay. God bless technology. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to redo that portion of the meeting. <laughs> Let's start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there's no further business, um, could I have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Okay, uh, Siobhan and Leah. Okay. One. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to pull the phone gets, if we're ready? Uh, I'll take that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we're done? We're not going to pull? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Board President Naylor. Hi. Director Green. Aye. Director Oysterman. Aye. Director Shea. Aye. Hey, that's the first time I've heard him say aye all night. That's great. <laughs> I said <laughs> aye in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> he approved the consent calendar. <laughs> Have a good night, all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Yeah, you too. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Call this meeting to order at 7:30. Call it for solar noon. Un unofficial uh, social trails that eventually need to go up one, two, and three. We've got people. Uh, there's points in this trail that are fairly narrow and without a lot of easy area to just step off to the side. So to do. So we carried up. And I am not wearing a mask. So that was good, and they are starting with a time of year when we would normally.